So this is my new uh, sterilization tank under here. Today I picked up this uh, PIR board. Now it's um, aluminium backed um, foam and this foam can handle temperatures of upwards of 200 degrees. You can see it's just in a big rigid board. Now I'm just going to cut this to size and all I'm going to do is glue it, um, glue it on, put some aluminium tape around the edges um, and then depending on how that holds maybe put a strop or something more permanent around the edges. I'm going to put this on all six sides, that's the bottom, the side, each side and a cover for the top which will have some plywood. Now I calculated it, this is 50mm PIR board. I mean this is covering the surface area of this, we will be uh, venting, it was around uh, 250 watts I think, so it's like 250 watts of heat will be um, egressing through this um, and escaping which is, which is pretty efficient, if I double this to 100 mils I think it went down to about 125 watts. Now it won't actually be that efficient because there's things like this lip you can see here um, and these legs and heat will move down and escape through there uh, but we're, our goal is to insulate as much of the heat in as possible which is generated by the steam the more we can insulate the less energy we need to convert um, into from that electricity into heat energy um, into the steam and put in here so it's all about making this as efficient as possible so I bought this from a place here in our Christchurch in New Zealand. The guy uh, who I actually bought it from used to work at our largest mushroom manufacturers here in New Zealand, Meadow Mushrooms, he used to work there years ago. So I actually had quite a good yarn to him and I told him I'm using it to sterilise and he said they would actually use uh, methyl, methyl bromide I think they used to use and they might still use it to this day from sterilising mushroom, uh, button mushroom substrate which I thought was interesting. But this board here is just a dream to cut. And all I'm doing is marking the lines. And you're just sawing your um, craft knife through it, just like this here. Now it's not like polystyrene. Polystyrene makes a horrific mess when you do it. Um, all, the little, all the little balls which are in polystyrene, all these balls, I don't know what you'd call them, little hexagonal shaped balls that make it all rip apart and go everywhere and it's really bad for the environment. So I don't particularly like using it, I have done in the past but I won't really try not to use it anymore. I didn't mean for it to snap like that, I usually run this through a second time. And you can usually get a really nice clean cut. That's a really clean cut and not much powder comes off, like a little bit of it. But the, I should really be doing it inside, but um, I don't really have it inside to do it because it's all mushroom farm. So we've got some boards here and we're just going to glue them onto the outside. I can't glue them flat because the walls of this are actually bowed out, so I can only really glue in the centre. But once I've glued the centre and we put the walls on, we'll attach them at the corners. Now the glue I've used is just Armaflex, and to get this out of the tube you just have to push your fingers in it like that and I'll smear it on. Damn, piss them with you. You've got to use a caulking gun. So we'll get some of this glue on and we'll get this first board on. And then we'll get the rest on and we'll have a look, see how it's looking. We might not be able to do it tonight, that sun is about to go down, it's going to start getting cold and we're going to lose light. So we've got all the insulation panels on the side here. Now I did make a wee mistake in the sides of the metal trough. Actually bowed out a little. And so when I measured it, I cut the foam to, to square, but when you put it on the side, it actually pushes all the sides out a little bit. And so I've got a little bit of a lift overhang here. So I've just had to put a bit of RTV down there to seal it, but that's fine. Um, we've got the lid here. Now today I just picked up a giant piece of stainless steel right here. So that's going to be fixed in the lid on the inside. Um, I did do a quick test run and I got it up to about 80 degrees. Um, and I just used this to see how, how this could handle the heat and it did alright but on here, I don't know if you can see, there's little air bubbles which have been created inside of the foam and I'm guessing they're from the, the moisture and the heat ingressing in there or perhaps bubbles that already exist and they expand and they make these little bumps here but that's okay um, we picked up the stainless steel which we'll have on the inside so that'll be direct, the steam won't be in direct contact with these um, big PIR boards if we lift this up, you can actually see inside there. 
So the steam comes in down here and gets um, pushed around this pipe which runs around the outside and that's got heaps of little holes drilled through it. So it directs the steam in there. This big uh, ridge down the middle actually helps hold up the false floor which I have it's actually sitting way over there. So a whole false floor goes in here and the false floor has heaps of uh, little holes cut all through it. There's the drain out there and this pipe coming in here was actually a temperature gauge which if you look over here you can actually see where it's stuck, stuck out there. I've kind of covered these just for the test run I did yesterday. But we'll get this um, sheet of stainless, oh you can see the, the bubbles there, it's crowded. We'll get the stainless glued to the lid. And after we glue it to the lid we're going to make a silicon gasket which goes around here. Because this here isn't actually, um, Jesus, this isn't actually dead flat. So you can see there's a big gap and that gap um, hemorrhages a lot of steam. So we have some adhesive here. Uh, Sear leads the one adhesive, the one. Yes, Neo, I am the one. Now I'm not going to go in squiggles, I'm going to go up and down. The reason I'm going to do this is because it might, squiggles might form big air gaps in the middle. And under the heat, when the air expands, if it's got nowhere to go, it might end up trying to push through the board. So I'm going to make a lot of lines like this. So if there are, the air can hopefully move up and down if there are air gaps in it. Kilo. Oh yeah, pump and iron, pump and iron. So this looks a bit crap, the surface here, but it's actually got a uh, film over it. And once we film, pull that off, there should be a bit of a mirror shine under there, I think. We need all the weight on here we can get, and it takes steel to bear the weight of a good pair of Crocs. So on they go. Right, we'll leave this. To cure, we'll set overnight and uh, get it mounted on top tomorrow. So I lid here has been out to dry all night. What I'm going to do now to repair this is just give a sand around here. And that's going to roughen up the surface a bit. And give our RTV, which is in our, um, our, our containers here, hopefully a bit of bite or a bit of grip on that surface. And on the surface of the lid, the stainless steel sheet and the lid, I'm going to put Vaseline and that will make sure the silicon should only bond with the bottom surface and release the top surface and that will um, effectively make us a gasket which when we then put the lid on should be able to seal um, pretty nicely around there. Now for this part we're going to need Vaseline and we're going to put Vaseline around the edge of it there where it's going to mate onto the silicon and that's going to prevent the silicon from bonding with this metal on top and it will only bond with the metal on bottom, the stainless on bottom and that should mean that we can lift the lid off and on and our gasket will stay in place. So you can see we have a layer of Vaseline all around the edges here and that should resist the bond of the silicon RTV which is right along here. So we just lie this on top, let it sit for 24 hours, then I should be able to come and pull that lid off and that silicon will maintain its nice shape and we'll have a nice gasket made for it. Now we just lift the lid on using the help from my very pregnant wife. I left it for two days to form this uh, silicon seal which I've got around here and it worked pretty well. Unfortunately the silicon in the very middle of the strip it wasn't curing and I think that's because it had no um, not much access to the um, atmosphere around it. So when we did pull the top off it actually pulled off a wee thin strip along the middle but that's fine. Um, there's still uh, quite a good silicon gasket here. Now I tested it last night and we heated it up to about 92 degrees centigrade um, and it was pretty fa fairly well sealed. 
It was a little bit of um, steam coming out of the corner over here, but as soon as we put a little bit of weight on that, that stopped. I put some um, heavy duty Velcro on to try and Velcro the top down to hold it down, but it just can't put enough downforce on it. So putting a bit of weight on the corner, like my 10 kilo weights here, generally works a bit better. But what I'm going to do now is just patch up the rest of these areas here. You can see where that beer foam um, is exposed. And we'll use a lot of our, this is, this is aluminium tape. This is reinforced aluminium tape. We're just going to use a lot of that. I've used this in my fruiting room and in wife's home. I've used this in my fruiting room. I um, mean, it's been in a high humidity environment and it still has not uh, detached from the panda film in the wool. So I do like this tape. But we'll get this sealed and we're going to get this loaded up. I don't know how many boxes are going to fit in there, but we're going to see what we can get in there. And we're going to um, take this for a 24 hour burn. This is a silicon gasket that I've made right here. And you can see how it aligns with the lid here. It makes a nice and flat seal. You can see the false floor inside here. Now there was a slight problem. That's when the lid's down and it sits like that there, there's actually a big gap in here which goes into the metal about the width of my finger and there's actually quite a lot of heat venting out of that gap so I'm going to have to move something in there to prevent that because that can radiate a substantial amount of heat out of this tank and that's what we don't want we want this to be as thermal efficient as possible we want all the heat staying inside that tank we've cut some nice thin pieces which we'll just tuck in there like so and that's just going to insulate that heat from moving out. So we have our first 20 bags in. We've got five per row. This is about how much I would fit in one of my uh, sterilizing drums. Now the reason I've got the gaps between them is you can actually see in these gaps some of the wee ear holes there. And that's going to allow the steam to permeate up between all the bags. I can squeeze them all down together and we can get an extra row in here but what that means is that bags in the middle of this um, tank might not actually get very much contact with the hot steam for potentially you know four five or six hours and they might not sterilize after my 24 hour burn so I'm leaving the gap between them initially just so we we guarantee we're going to get a few cooks off now I should be able to stack easily three high with a little bit more space at the top to maybe lie some sideways, another layer sideways. So we have 46 bags in here. That's all I'm going to do for the first burn. We'll get it on now, we'll get it heated up and get her going. You can see I finished the lip here and it's pretty flush to the top. I'll set that there. That lip should block out most of where that heat was venting. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Yeah, that fits nicely. That fits nicely. I'll show you what these straps were for. The intention was to put pressure on and get the Velcro over. It's really strong Velcro, but it just doesn't quite have enough downforce. But I'll do it anyway. And these guys here, just it's a solution. It goes over there for now, and that corner there will leak a bit, but it's okay. We'll get this going. Woo! Doesn't that look good? Like a giant bloody. Treasure box, treasure chest. If you were a pirate, you'd be pretty happy. Eh? Arr, 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 mateys. So it's getting late. I'm in my blimmin' pajamas, and I'm still waiting for this to heat up. We're at 71 degrees now, and its target is 95 degrees. When I did the test run on it, I'd never had the false floor in it, or sorry, the yeah, the false floor, and that's in that now. And I don't know if that's slowing down that steam permeation through to heat up the, the main chamber but it's doing it slower than it was last night plus there is a lot of substrate in there which 
it takes a while for that to heat up because when that's cold and the steam hits it the steam's going to condense cool down and drip down to the bottom but hopefully in another hour or two this should be nice and warm tried to get this thing up to temperature all weekend I was able to hit 95C which is the temperature I sterilised at but it couldn't keep it there efficiently my little boiler was working virtually 90% of the time just to try and get it, keep it there and that's what I don't like I'd rather the boiler come on for you know 2 to 4 seconds every 10-15 seconds so it got me thinking what is the problem and it pretty much comes down to one issue and that's my little wee boiler doesn't quite have the grunt to keep this thing uh, at temperature efficiently. I actually measured the output from my wee boiler and it's producing uh, 2.5 kilos of steam per hour. That's an alright amount, but it's just not enough. And I calculated the uh, energy required to get this thing heated up with, a, with those bags in there and then to keep it at temperature and it's just too much for my boiler to handle. So I've got some big things in the works for a new boiler and I've got the designs off and away to a stainless steel fabricators today hoping I get that back by the end of the week and then maybe, just maybe, we can get this thing going properly the next video I will cover off those uh, calculations I did to figure out just how much kilojoules worth of energy I need to get into this here to get it hot and to keep it there